uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm uh, going to be talking about the uh, work we've done for coronavirus in the Wolfram data repository. Uh, I'm John Castle. I'm with the Wolfram Alpha scientific content team. And I focus on uh, biology and in particular uh, content and tools for genetics and molecular biology. As part of this uh, Wolfram coronavirus effort, I've been maintaining a uh, data repository resource containing genetic sequences of, the, uh, of this virus. And uh, I also contribute to the kind of genetic analysis of this data uh, as, as, as appropriate. So uh, the data contained in our resource is from the National Center for Biotechnology Information. They have a novel coronavirus data hub that uh, gets updated um, fairly frequently, and we keep up to date with that, providing a nice Wolfram uh, data repository item that has uh, all of this metadata and sequence data together. Uh, so uh, as you can see uh, in this, uh, this item, there's a, a nice uh, data set containing uh, the sequences, the uh, information about the species, where the sample was discovered, when it was discovered. Uh, here we see that uh, there's both the collection date and the release date. There's uh, information about like, you know, how it's in GenBank. And uh, these sequences are, fa are fairly comprehensive. They include both complete genomes and uh, genetic sections of particular regions. Uh, so you really get uh, kind of all the coverage of the uh, genetic resources as they're currently being provided. So as a part of uh, the analysis that comes with this Wolfram data repository item, uh, we also get, uh, provide some timelines. So you can see the timeline of when these samples were collected, when they were released to the public, and also the uh, kind of the countries affected. Uh, we also provide an example visualization of the, uh, we, what we're seeing here is a similarity comparison between whole genomes. Uh, we've dropped the uh, end of the uh, kind of the sequence after in uh, RNA sequences, kind of after the coding information, there's a, uh, a, a, a there's uh, al repeated alanines, and that can be of various length, and that's used uh, by the body to indicate how far the um, how long the messenger RNA has been out there to initiate decay mechanisms, and it's really not part of the the coding of the sequence either uh, among viruses or uh, it, it, in our own messenger RNA. So uh, that, uh, that's kind of dropped off and uh, uh, cleaned up here for this analysis. And then what we do is we're showing, we're using the kind of the resource function, the phylogenetic tree plot, and we're taking a look at how similar the different sequences are uh, depending on when the sequence was collected and what country it was found in. And uh, this analysis shows that uh, a lot of the early Chinese sequences are very closely grouped together. Some of the later United States sequences are close together. But as kind of the uh, time has gone on and kind of the virus has spread, you see a kind of increasing uh, a mutation and kind of further viral development. And so th this, you can tell a lot with a kind of a little, very small plot here with this visualization. In terms of analysis, uh, you can, uh, we can see the particular mutations by, again, uh, dropping these trailing alanines and then doing a sequence alignment. So here we see uh, a fair number of mutations for, for China and a smaller but different mutations for kind of the samples for United States, Australia, and Japan kind of showing some of the, the viral uh, development. So supposing you were to take this data set and analyze it yourself, uh, what, what else could one do? Well, you could do analyses similar to the above to virus fragments. There are also different sections of the virus included, not just the whole genomes. And uh, you could learn about kind of the differences there. Uh, you, you could use sequence alignment to uncover specific mutations and compare them kind of over time to kind of verify 
viral lineages and kind of cross-check those against the phylogenetic trees. Uh, you can calculate the difference between the collection and the release date by country to see kind of how frequently, you know, uh, how each country is kind of mobilizing their, their efforts. Uh, de depending on the sequence, you could uh, classify which terms will be in the GenBank label and see, you know, if you can detect features that were, are f kind of for each country or for each, each type of subsequence. Uh, and you know, I guess you can compare sample and mutation counts to country populations to see if, if that's having an influence. There's uh, really a lot that you can do with this resource, and there's probably much more and, that I haven't thought of. But these are some of the ways that uh, you, might, you could consider uh, analyzing this data. Uh, this data is also very nice to use in conjunction with other data that you might have. For example, uh, I'll show you here how to do some compare. If you have sequences of other viruses you're interested in, you could compare how uh, similar they are to the samples here. So here, uh, I'm going to be using, uh, gathering kind of the original reference sequence, the, the one believed to be kind of at the root of the phylogenetic tree or as originally discovered uh, in China. And we're going to compare that with another sequence record. I've chosen arbitrarily here. We just happen to see it was uh, in the United States, collected about the middle of the month on, on January. And so now uh, I also have uh, kind of the, uh, a SARS-like virus that occurs in bats. Uh, so I've gathered that by using the resource function import FASTA, and I have its accession ID here. And if, uh, also I have kind of the reference version of the human SARS virus. Uh, using uh, this accession to gather here, in all cases, dropping these trailing alanines. Uh, so if we compare these using kind of a normalized uh, Smith-Waterman distance to uh, handle different lengths of these various viruses, we see that the original sample is perfectly similar with itself, always a good, good thing to have uh, taken care of. We see that the other, another, the other sample of, of the uh, coronavirus is 0.999, uh, you know, 0.999799% similar. So that's really quite the same, only a handful of mutations different there. Bat SARS is about three quarters similar and human SARS only kind of 0 0.6 similar. So the bat vi virus kind of much closer as far as that goes. And we'll actually be able to see the, uh, the difference here by uh, we're going to align the original reference sequence to the other coronavirus, the, 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 the bat SARS, and the, uh, the human SARS. Here we see that the, the uh, other coronavirus sample only has three differences with the sequence, while the bat SARS has some 3,200 differences, so quite different. And now I've prepared uh, in a way to, to see kind of, the, the, uh, kind of the, the difference in magnitude over time. So here we see that there's a, if for the, between the two coronavirus examples, there's, you know, 8,701, eight base pairs similar, then one difference, then 9,277 base pairs the same, and then one difference and so forth. And I can turn that into uh, kind of a plot over, over time. And here we see if we plot all of the different alignments against each other, we'll see that the, uh, the coronavirus comparisons nearly perfectly line up and the um, broad stretches of similarity for the kind of the bat SARS to the coronavirus, human SARS, kind of much less though, but still uh, far closer than random. And, and that's just one example of something you could do with this data set and other, other uh, data sets, such as other viral sequences as you uh, happen to have them. So I, I hope you really uh, have an opportunity to kind of look into this, uh, this data resource and, and play around with it and post it on community and uh, let us know what you've done. And uh, uh, hopefully you'll, uh, come up with some uh, analysis that's uh, very exciting and really puts this data resource to good use. Uh, uh, thank you very much.